Hello, Jacob here, and today we're going to be taking this chip, the Ryzen 7 3700X, and putting it through this test bench to see just how much performance we can eke out of these Zen no, 2 no, architecture. No, 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 party's over, shut it down, game's over, we've done all the tests with the synthetic benchmarks, even the ones Intel doesn't want you to know about, and found there's almost no reason whatsoever to do Ryzen 3000 overclocking. Yeah, sorry. Don't worry, it was just an Athlon, and it was already broken that Ooh. this right here is the real ryzen 7 3700x covered in thermal goop and we've already put it through its paces in this here test bench and unfortunately dave was right amd hasn't left any performance on the table with zen 2 barely a drop and what you see boxed up on the shelves is what you get overclock or no that's still an 8-core, 16-thread processor that offers a mix of multi-threaded computational chops, decent gaming performance, and great value, however, and it is a pretty convincing buy next to Intel's rival chips. But before we talk numbers, let's go through the overclocking process. Here's Dave with the details. Take it away, sugar. Thanks, honey. So let's talk overclocking. There are three limits to keeping the Ryzen 3000 processors from their ultimate power, and that's PPT, TDC, and EDC. Precision Boost Overdrive, available in either Ryzen Master or your motherboard's BIOS, removes these limits and replaces them with the maximum values your board is capable of delivering. PPT is the total socket power. Typically, this is limited to 88 watts on the Ryzen 7 3700X. However, our first stop on this overclocking escapade is to crack this up to 1000 watts. TDC represents the sustained current limit. This determines the current delivered via the VRMs under continuous load. The stock 60 amp limit can be cracked all the way up to 360 amps. EDC is the peak current limit. This determines the maximum current delivered via the VRMs in short bursts. The stock 90 amp limit just won't do, so let's go with a maximum value of 480 amps. Also available within the MSI MEG ACE X570 BIOS is the option to turn the C TDP limit all the way up to 128 watts. It's not an option clearly defined within the Ryzen Master utility, and it may be superseded by the aforementioned limits. We cranked it all the way up to 11 anyways. It's probably fine. Then it's on to voltages. We started out with what we initially believed to be a generous 1.4 volt CPU core voltage to Ryzen's 4.4 gigahertz max clock on all cores. Black screen. Okay, 1.4125 volts at 44. Black screen. Following that same stepping, we went all the way up to 1.45 volts, the red line, and we had no luck. And we weren't willing to push our sole Ryzen 7 review sample beyond AMD's recommended limit only days after launch but you stop caring after a while. So rather than increase the voltage, we had to drop the frequency. First we tried 43.75, no luck, or 43.5, but we managed at 1.4375 volts to hit 4.3 gigahertz all core overclock. Even with our 4.3 gigahertz all core in place, our chip wasn't entirely stable through our punishing X265 version 5.0 encoding benchmark. And as for performance, single threaded applications suffered due to the lack of occasional boost beyond the 4.3 gigahertz mark thanks to Precision Boost 2. So while some multi threaded applications made marginal use of this all core clock, few games or single threaded synthetic benchmarks showed any improvement whatsoever. So this is a pretty easy graph to pass, while CPU load usually increases at 1080p, Total War is a real sucker for raw frequency. Even the stock 3700X will manage 4.3GHz across at least 3 or 4 cores under load, so there's very little difference in this title, no matter what we change in the BIOS. The CPU comes into play a little more in Assassin's Creed Odyssey, and the overclocked chip ever so slightly outperformed the stock 3700X during our testing although only by 3 FPS on average, and it did take a slight hit to minimum frame times to get there. While we're seeing strong performance for the Ryzen 7 3700X across the board in Metro, our overclock is making absolutely no difference whatsoever. Thanks 4A Games. Hey, would you look at that? Some improvement up 4.3 GHz, but not as much as our 3733 MHz memory overclock. Wah, wah. Multi-threaded scores go up and single-threaded scores go down. That's the circle of life. The circle of life. What he sang. Uh, yeah, and it's also the unfortunate compromise you have to make to hit an all-core boost on the Ryzen 3000 CPUs. Efficiency gains? What efficiency gains? A manual all-core overclock at 1.437 volts is enough to make even the power-efficient 7 nanometer process node thirsty for current. And while still within acceptable CPU temp range, our 4.3 GHz overclock cranks up the heat considerably to 84 degrees Celsius under load, and that's in X264 version 5. 
That's quite a jump from stock, which maintained a breezy 64 degrees during that same run. Even on the latest Agisa, Agisa, Agisa. Agisa update and BIOS version, there's very little advantage to overclocking your Ryzen 7 3700X. And by extension, due to this 65 watt chip's proclaimed overclocking advantage, likely any and all remaining Ryzen 3000 processors too. Mm, third face. Maybe it's because Zen 2 is still in its infancy, as is the 7 nanometer process node, or maybe it's just that all the top bin chiplets are scooped up for the Ryzen 7 3800X. Whatever the reason, this Ryzen 3000 chip doesn't enjoy us messing around behind the scenes. Even the efficiency gains of the 7 nanometer process node are all but forgotten once you crank up voltages and frequencies. Our Ryzen 7 3700X was gaining fast on its 14 nanometer predecessor with overclock in hand. So rather than destroy the power efficiency gains that AMD has been chasing these past few years, you could instead squeeze your memory into the 3733 MHz performance sweet spot. After all, this is the soft touch approach that AMD itself recommends. The benefit of which is minor, very, especially when making the upgrade from a 3200 kit. But unlike overclocking, there's no real downside. You'll likely never even notice the 1 to 3 frames gained at 1440p and 4K at 3733, but we assure you it's definitely there. With that, we say leave these chips in their stock configuration as Lisa Sue intended, and just start gaming. And if you've enjoyed our frequency fiddling foray, give us a like, subscribe to the channel, and make sure to check back on PCGamesN.com for more in hardware and gaming. Yes, thanks for watching and see you next time. Sayonara. Bye.